Good evening everyone, I hope you're doing good. Welcome back to the channel, good afternoon. Um, today we're going to carry on with another lecture concerning American civilization. Just to recapitulate what we have dealt with in the previous video that you are going to find uh, at the end of this video. Uh, you are going to get uh, some suggestions about the previous videos of course. If you have missed them, um, feel free to subscribe to the channel. To be notified there is a Facebook page please leave a like it will encourage me to do more and also for you to be notified as well uh, you can also find some useful content in that Facebook page concerning uh, English language in general so today uh, like I said to recapitulate the pre-civil war video we have spoken about the reforms the criminal life you know the three stages of reforms um, the more reforms, the social reforms, and the radical reforms. And also, we have spoken about the uh, pre-Civil War culture, and we have seen that the American culture was so poor, but at the end, they started to develop a consciousness. I have given you four major works, like Rip Van Winkle by Washington Irving in 1819, Nature by Rolf Waldo Emerson in 1836, and Nathaniel Hawthorne in 1850 uh, who wrote the Scarlet Letter. Then lastly I have given Leaves of Grass by Walt Whitman. These are the major works that uh, show the uh, divergence of the um, Americans from the British way of doing like I said. And also I have added some differences between the North and the South. Um, and the most important thing that uh, we have seen, the nullification crisis, the impending crisis. And today, and today we, have, we are going to speak about Abraham Lincoln briefly, just to speak about uh, his career um, and uh, how did he get to the political um, side of doing. So, the Civil War in 18... Well, you, know, you should know that the Civil War started in 1861. It was the end of the antebellum, and it ended in 1865. You should know that it is the largest military conflict in the West from 1810 and 1918. 600,000 Americans lost their lives, which means if you combine the casualties of the Americans uh, of the First World War and the Second World War, this civil war will uh, win the bet, if I may say. So Abraham Lincoln, Abraham Lincoln was born in 1809 uh, in Kentucky. His parents are Baptists. Uh, to be Baptist is a religion, uh, and he was, uh, and you know, baptism is from uh, Protestantism. And he was against slavery since the beginning. Abraham Lincoln, since he was a child, he was against slavery. He had many jobs. Then he became an attorney, uh, which means a lawyer. Uh, it shaped his personality. So all the, the let's say, the, the personal background of Abraham Lincoln, the things that he has endured, these things combined together shaped it, his personality. So in 1840, he declared his thoughts about slavery. And he said, I quote, if slavery is not wrong, then nothing is wrong. In 1850s, or in the 1850s, he joined the Republican Party and he was an abolitionist, which means he was against slavery. He wanted to end slavery in America. And in 1860, he was the candidate for the uh, presidency of the United States of America. Indeed, he was elected president of the United States and in February, 1861 seven states left the Union and they joined the Confederate uh, let's say Confederacy or Confederate Union uh, you should know that um, the when when Abraham Lincoln was elected the, as president of the United States people already knew about his thoughts about the uh, slavery <coughs> sorry so the, the southerners, because the south 
mainly depended on slavery and the north was industrial so they did not need slaves so the north was against slaves and in the south they were for slaves they needed slaves in order to work on their lands Abraham Lincoln was against slavery and he became president of the United States of America so what did the south do they seceded they left the union they they left what we call the United States of America they made their own union um, called the Confederate States of America or between brackets Confederacy in March 4th 4th March 1861 Abraham Lincoln gave a speech when he became officially president he told the Confederates to come back to the Union he even told South Carolina that uh, he'll send a fleet to supply a fort. This fort na named uh, Fort Sumter in South Carolina, of course. They didn't, and the South, South Carolina did not welcome this fleet because they were too afraid that he's sending troops in order to uh, take back South Carolina to the north. And in uh, April the 12th, they fired at this fleet, so the the troops of south carolina the confederate south carolina they um, fired at the fleet of abraham lincoln or the fleet of the united states of america with cannons of course and at the fort as well it was the beginning of the american civil war in 1861 and of course it was the first victory of the confederacy now just to uh, sum up everything uh, this is included in Abraham Lincoln's biography or just some important, uh, uh, let's say, uh, information about him. Now, the American Civil War, it all started with the secession of the southern states, like we said. But this secession was not like by coincidence or just like that. It didn't happen just like that. There were some specific causes or specific reasons why or of this secession. First one is the fact that the problems or problems emerged between the federal government and the southern states. So we have some problems between the federal government. You should know what is the federal government because in the United States we have the local government and we have the federal government. The local government is like the, the, the government of New York, for example, New Jersey. Each state has its own government, but they all abide according to the federal government who controls everything, you know, the Congress, etc. The second point, the second cause, the major cause, is economic and cultural differences between the North and the South. Um, you know, when we say economic uh, and cultural differences between the North and the South, uh, economic, you know, the North is industrial and the South is agricultural. Why the North is industrial? Because we have some, let's say, hard living conditions there. The agriculture does not work there, so they had to develop a um, industry, if I may say. And in the south, since the the lands are low laying and flat and good climate, they developed a, a, a agriculture way of doing. Then the third point, the will. This is the most important point: the will of the southern states to expand slavery to the west. The southern state. Or states wanted to expand slavery to the West what do we mean by that well simply the United States in the beginning there were 13 13 states before they would call the 13 colonies or New England once they got their independence they became United States of America but these 13 United States were only situated on the east coast of the continent so they had to expand uh, westwards under the name, uh, the principle uh, is called the Manifest Destiny or the Frontier. So they could get more lands to join the Union. Then there was a problem. The southern states wanted to make these new states as slave states. And the, 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 let's say the northern states wanted to make them a free state. This is a bit of a problem. Then the election of Abraham Lincoln made things worse for the southerners and uh, of course after his election they created the confederacy under the presidency of Jefferson Davis uh, and of course the north was superior 
uh, they had more population, they had more banks, they had more uh, factories, uh, but the Confederates had more competent generals because when the generals who were in the north, they, uh, they knew that there was a civil war coming, they left the north, they joined the south because they came from the south. So they had the South had the advantage of defending and the North was conquering because the North had to take back the South and the South did not like they were not obliged to move northward to take the North but they had to defend their uh, states only so the, the task or the objective of the North was a bit harder than the South and as well they had um, Let's say the North had uh, a plan called the Anaconda Plan, uh, made by General Winfield Scott, of course, or also called the Scott's Great Snake. So the plan was, or was meant to tighten the South, to close the harbors in the coasts and uh, try to take the capital of the Confederacy, Richmond in Virginia, etc., in order to tighten, let's say, the place on them. Now we move to some decisive battles of the Civil War. The first battle of the Civil War was uh, called Fort Sumter in 1861. It was the beginning of the Civil War and the Confederates won the battle. It was the first decisive victory of uh, the Confederacy. Then there was a battle called Antietam, which is quite important, or also na named or also called or also known under the name of Shapesburg or Shapsburg in 1862. It was the bloodiest battle of uh, all the Civil War. It is also called the bloodiest single day of war, which gave Abraham Lincoln the chance to issue Emancipation Proclamation. What we need to know now, the Emancipation Proclamation is quite important. Why? Because for Abraham Lincoln, in the beginning, the war is to preserve the Union. He wanted to take back the Southern states. He wanted to make them uh, join the Union again. But after this battle of Antietam, Abraham Lincoln issued what we call the Emancipation Proclamation. He wanted to end slavery in the United States of America. Now the war changed. Now the purpose of the war changed. In order for Abraham Lincoln, in order to preserve the Union, they needed to end slavery. The third battle is Gettysburg in 1863. The South was defeated for the first time. Uh, and uh, General Robert E. Lee had to go back to the Confederacy as a retreat for the first time uh, in his life. Then we have the Battle of Vicksburg in 1863. The Confederates lost control of the Mississippi River. Now the, the Anaconda Plan is working and they have tightened the, um, let's say, um, the strate strategic points of the Confederacy. Then at the end, General Lee surrendered to General Grant in 1865 in Appomattox Court House. Now Robert E. Lee is a general of the Confederates. Ulysses S. Grant and William T. Sherman, both of them are uh, generals of the Union. This is approximately the, um, let's say, the American Civil War. How did it happen? The battles and the Emancipation Proclamation which was ratified in 1865, uh, it became the 13th Amendment. Now I'm going to summarize a little bit what we have dealt here in order, in order that you would be able to write something maybe for your exams or something. Um, after the election of Abraham Lincoln, who was against slavery, seven states seceded, like I said, from the Union. They left the Union and they established their own union called Confederate States of America, or the CSA. The war began when Lincoln sent a ship to resupply Fort Sumter in Charles Charleston Harbor. The Confederacy shot, it, shot at it, and it was their first victory. 1st January 1863, the Emancipation Proclamation, it changed the purpose of the war from preserving the Union to abolishing slavery. This is what we have dealt with as a summary in this lecture. Now we move to some consequences of the war. Um, I have chosen three uh, most important consequences according to me, but you might find others elsewhere. We have public lands were offered to West Western settlers 
I mean, if you go to um, America, you are if you settle there, you are you are you have the right to own lands to be given lands in order to work them. Uh, and the end of slavery and the emancipation of four million blacks or black people, right? And uh, the ratification of Emancipation Proclamation in 1865 under the name of the 13th Amendment, which joined the American Constitution. Now, when we say ratification, it means to be, uh, let's say, because before ratifying Emancipation Proclamation, it was just a bill, for example, just a law. It was not official, but... Um, like I said, after the uh, 1865, it was ratified, it was passed by the Congress, it was accepted, then it was included in the American Constitution. Now, this is it for the American Civil War. I hope I had made things clear for you. Uh, otherwise, you can always uh, message my Facebook page. I'll be glad to answer as soon as I see your messages. And please uh, leave a like, subscribe to the channel if it's not done yet. Uh, otherwise, I tell you, see you in the next video. Peace.